All right, y'all. Round two. So I actually have him on LinkedIn and YouTube with me right now. So we just started streaming on YouTube and LinkedIn again. But got a guest, for those of y'all that missed out earlier, got a guest who did Yellowtail Bootcamp to become a Linux systems engineer. So this is a very in-demand role in tech, but also it's a very unique role in tech, a skill set that a lot of people don't have. And Yellowtail Bootcamp is training people in it. So I have my guest that I'm about to bring on. I was trying to bring him on earlier, but we were having some problems. And I'm going to go ahead and send the request. George, can you can you drop your uh, your name in the chat again, your Instagram name? So I'll go ahead and uh, send you a join request. All I remember is Papa Greek. That's the only part I remember. All right, you just dropped it. Oh, no, you didn't drop it. Yeah, man. Private chat. <laughs> That's pretty good, man. He's about to send me his Instagram name. He has a very long Instagram name. So as he gives that to me, I'm gonna go ahead and send him a request so he could join in a live with us. So again, y'all, Yellowtail Bootcamp is they're teaching Linux and cloud engineering. These are very high in demand roles in it's tech. It's right here in the. It's in the. Uh, uh, where did you send the send your Instagram name to? Oh, you can't hear me. I'm, I'm talking to him. I forgot he can't hear me. I just dropped it. Oh, man. I got it. I put right, it on the it. Instagram chat and I put it in our private chat. Name it now. Petros, the Greek. Okay, cool. Can you hear me? All right, I just sent you the invite. All right, so he's gonna get the invite in just a second. He's going to join on Instagram with us. Hey, man, can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's All going right. on? We're in business. Yo, yo, let's get it. All right. So, yeah. All right. So, we got this sorted out. All right. Good stuff. Yeah. Sorry, so, everyone. As, <laughs> as I always tell y'all, you can work in tech and still run into technical difficulties. <laughs> That's why you get into so, tech. Now, I think one of the biggest things people hit me with all the time, people are like, well, Cyrus, can you fix this for me or help me with my TV? And I'm like, just because somebody works in tech does not mean <laughs> that they're able to do everything when it comes to technology. It does not work like that. That is all. for sure, man. Yeah. Anyway, we rock and we rolling, y'all. And so, uh, as always, for those of y'all that missed the missed kind of my intro earlier, so uh, George did Yellowtail Bootcamp. He, he went from teacher to breaking into tech as a Linux systems engineer. So y'all know I was a sales engineer. That's how I broke into tech. That's what I've predominantly done in the, the tech or the, the software industry. Uh, but George is a systems engineer, which is something entirely different. Now, cool thing is that he did, he did Yellowtail Tech which they have cl a cloud engineering um, role or cloud engineering course, as well as the Linux course. We're going to talk a little bit about what George did, his experience with Yellowtail Bootcamp. As always, y'all know, you know, whenever I'm talking about somebody in tech, I'm talking about a bootcamp that they did. Whenever I find like a solid bootcamp, I always, always don't just recommend the bootcamp, but I find some kind of way to be able to help people get a discount into the program. Let's save people a little bit of coins. Also, as always, y'all know full transparency. Whenever somebody does a boot camp in the way that I give people a discount, I always get some type of like kickback from like the boot camp or program. I love to have full transparency so people know. So if you don't like me and but you still want to do the boot camp and you don't want to save five hundred dollars, still do the boot camp. That's totally fine. Uh, but either way, make sure you keep me posted on your experience breaking into tech so that way we can could eventually bring you on here you share your story as well because just like george has a very unique story unique experience and background you know likewise you have a unique story as well and your story can help other people be able to get into the tech industry also and so really excited to have this conversation with him because systems engineering a lot of y'all have been asking me about it and i've been like look i don't know a boot camp that teaches systems engineering I saw a couple different boot camps, but after doing some research, I wasn't too comfortable with like mentioning them or promoting them. And but then after like stumbling upon Yellowtail and looking through their boot camp, what they're about, I was like, yo, this is like pretty thorough, pretty solid. So I'm really excited to have this conversation so I can learn some stuff about systems engineering 
And so you all can learn about this other opportunity that's in tech to make a lot of money and have the freedom that you want. So anyway, all of that being said, uh, pretend, pretend like I'm just now bringing George on the live. Y'all give some some clapping emojis, some fire emojis, whatever emoji you want to use to thank George for being on here. Because, again, he's not getting paid for being on here. This is literally just him coming on, him sharing his story to help other people. So y'all definitely show some love uh, to George for being on here. Awesome, George, thank you for coming on here, bro. I appreciate you, man. My pleasure. Yes. Spend, spending your beautiful, wonderful evening, your time <laughs> off to, to, to come on here and be able to help other people. I love it's it, my man. it's my pleasure, man. That's what I was looking for when I was breaking into tech. Someone that would just help me. And it's hard to get people to help you. So, you know, if I can give back there, if anyone can take any nuggets away tonight, that's a win. Yeah, that's, that's what it's all about, man. I think when I first got in the industry, it was dope, like to make more money and be living a, a more comfortable life. But it didn't take very long before I started feeling like, man, it just feels weird to where my life is good now. And I know that I'm in a position that most of the rest of not even just not even just the world, but even most of America is not in. And I was like, man, like, how can I help people out? And so so I always love it whenever there's like a kindred spirit like yourself that wants to come on, wants to be able to help people. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm stop flapping my gums. We're going to go ahead and, and actually get into it. So uh, first and foremost, George. So I've mentioned before that you are a Linux systems engineer. Can you explain to everybody, first and foremost, really quickly, what does a Linux systems engineer do? Well, it's a good question. It's uh, and, and the role that title system engineer applies to so many different roles and different and different jobs. Um, the one designation to make right away is that a lot of times when people hear engineer, they're thinking like DevOps engineer, like yeah. building infrastructure. That's not what I do. I am yeah. more of like an operations engineer. So I, as okay. a systems engineer, I ensure that the systems that we have in place keep running. And, okay. a, you know, so a, a lot of that is having, you know, um, some command of the command line, like a, a Linux system and being okay. able to inve investigate issues when they come up and, you know, know the right things to do and put together to fix problems. Okay, cool. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull back a little bit Okay. because part of me, I have questions based on my knowledge and my limited knowledge in tech, but mm -hmm. I also hear other questions that people are asking where they might not know, because we have a variety of people that are on here right now. There are people that are on here that know more more than we do about, mm -hmm. about tech. But then there are a lot of people that are on here that they hear they hear that, okay, you're not DevOps, but you're, you work with systems. Mm -hmm. And to them, all of that is like, what? So when you say DevOps, when you say that, okay, being a systems engineer is not like, you being a, a developer, like where you're like developing or coding or programming, mm -hmm. it's not that. So it's not the 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 super technical stuff or super tiny wimey stuff that people think about when they think of like the tech industry. But instead, you said that you are operating or you're working with the systems. So when you say systems, like what exactly does that mean? Sure, absolutely. Um, there are servers, computer servers out okay. there that that interact with each other to transmit information okay. so when i say system i'm referring to that system all right you know those, so you say server you mean like those big boxes and stuff yeah right okay cool all right right the big boxes that hold information and okay. the the big boxes that hold information i work with are essentially database servers so for those of you that might not know what that is you have a computer and there's different functions on it and that's called a server. It serves a purpose. The servers I work with are database servers. So they hold a lot of information like numerical information and things like that. So as a systems engineer, I'm tasked to engineer those systems. So I, it's my job to ensure that those systems are kept up and running. And when problems okay. occur, I go in and, and troubleshoot and fix and make sure they become operational again, which is why I'm in the operations department to make sure those things operate. Okay, cool. All right. So that makes sense. Uh, makes total sense now as to how okay. you're in the operations department and you're a Linux systems engineer. So 
I'm going to give one use case or example, because again, a lot of people don't know what use case means. It took me, even, even after I was in tech, it took me about like a month before I understood. Everybody would mention use case. I was like, what is that? I just pretended like I knew what it meant. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm going to give an example and you tell me how right this is or how wrong this is. And y'all, the purpose of this is so that I want to make sure everybody is on the, is everybody's on the same page. Uh, and also somebody mentioned the lag. Y'all let me know in the comments if everybody's experiencing a lag on Instagram. Also, y'all let me know on YouTube, LinkedIn, if y'all are hearing us good and everything's going well. Uh, anyway, so example, tell me how right this is or how wrong this is. So as a systems engineer, specifically Linux systems engineer, what you deal with, with this being an example, where one of the servers, which again is that is that the box, the computer, the big computer box that has the flashing lights that holds the data and the information. Is that something to where maybe one of them is slightly malfunctioning? Not like it's catching on fire, but it's slightly malfunctioning. Mm -hmm. You receive some type of alert, maybe either through your computer or you maybe you visibly see something's wrong. It's your job to make sure that it's operating properly and you, whether physically or through your computer, look into what's going on and then you make a correction. So that way it continues to operate properly. Yes, and I'll, I'll, it's exactly right with the caveat. If, okay. it's physical, if it's physical, I don't touch that. That would be more like the administrators that deal with that. Okay, um, so, cool. So what you said is spot on, but uh, only the first part where through my computer, I would go inside that operating system, which is Linux, and I would start troubleshooting that area. I, part of my job is to make sure it's not something hardware, you know, so okay. it, if an alert or an alarm pops up, which is what happens in the real world, you get what's called an alarm, right? Mm -hmm. And you get notified by an operation center. And my job is to take a look at what's happening. They might say, hey, there's latency or like lag or slow down computers or okay. we're, ex we're experiencing some kind of issue. So my job is to go in, punch a couple of commands in, look at some logs, um, you know, investigate, do some research to engineer a solution to what yeah. might be happening. And if it's something that I, I can't figure out, I might start reaching out to the systems administrators and say, hey, I think maybe this is a hardware issue. Can you go take a look at it? So there we work as okay, a team. Cool. Okay, cool. So yeah, so you just deal with the, 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 the software side of it. So you don't actually go in and touch it and press any buttons. You just deal with the, the 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 software, the things that you can kind of run and handle from your computer, and then there's someone exactly. else that will go in and actually physically touch it and handle it. Okay, that's really dope. That's you know, it, it's it's so it's so interesting to me. Now I'm sure there's a lot to your role, but it's so interesting to me how because because before getting in the tech industry, and this is what y'all let me know if y'all agree with this because I think all of y'all feel this way now. Before getting in the tech industry. Everything just seems so complicated. And then after after doing the boot camp, and when I was doing the boot camp, I was like, there's no way this stuff could be like, you know, this simple. Like not saying that it's not a lot, but it's like it's it's simple. And then getting in the industry and realizing, like, okay, like man, this stuff is not as complex as I thought. And now whenever people message me, and I get a lot of messages from y'all where people are like, man, this tech stuff, it just seems so impossible. And I'm going to be real with y'all. Even now learning about what a systems engineer is, because systems engineering, uh, Lin specifically Linux systems engineering, is a role that I didn't know very much about until now. And even before you explained it, my mind was like, oh, man, this just the name S Linux systems engineer. It sounds just so vast and complex. But then hearing you just simply explain what it is, where it's like, hey, look, like there's a, you know, there's a server box that, that stores the data. Sometimes it, it has an issue. It goes wrong. I might get an alert or I'm, I'm checking up on it on the computer. I see an alert. If I'm able to fix it on my end, I fix it. If, if it's not something that I could fix it's on the software side, there's somebody else, you know, I ping them and they go ahead and check on it physically. And it's like to hear that there is a job just like sales engineering or just like, you know, you know, something similar where it's like, man, it's it's hard work, but it's a simple job. But to do a job that's that simple and to be able to make so much more money 
than a job that's not as simple as being a teacher, it's actually mind blowing. It's like, man. And right. so, so, you know, let's, let's get into it. So first let's, let's jump back to the beginning. And again, y'all make sure everybody y'all are, those of y'all that are on Instagram that y'all are posting your questions in the question box uh, or the question circle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and everybody that are here on, on YouTube, LinkedIn, make sure that y'all are primed and ready to ask your questions so that way we can answer them for you. Uh, but let's jump back a little bit, George. Um, oh, yeah. And for everybody who's just now jumping on, again, he did Yellowtail Bootcamp. Uh, he's a Linux systems engineer. He did their Linux course. So for anyone that is interested, again, for those of y'all that just heard, like, the, the job he did, where, again, always say that many of the jobs in tech are, they're simple. Not saying that they're easy, but they're simple, meaning that you can learn it. It requires hard work. It requires you to be studious. It's not jobs mm -hmm. where like you're lazy, you're kicking your feet up. It's like, no, you're working hard. You're getting paid well because you're working hard. It comes with a lot of benefits, a lot of incentives, all the good stuff. Nevertheless, it's something that is not as complex as many of us thought that it was. And that's why many, you know, many people aren't in the tech industry and more black and brown people are getting in the tech industry. More people that might not have thought they were a good fit for it are now getting in the industry because they're becoming more aware. And that's the whole purpose of this live. Uh, and for anybody that's interested, if you're interested in being a cloud developer or a or, a, you know, whether doing something like what George is doing, either comment the word cloud or comment the word systems engineer or comment the word Linux. And myself or somebody on my team will, will shoot you a message. Right now we're on live. Somebody on my team will shoot you a message with a breakdown of the boot camp as well as a five hundred dollar off discount link. Uh, so that being said, let's go. Let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning, not the very beginning, but your but your beginning before uh, before getting in tech. So I know you were a teacher. Mm -hmm. So what was life like as a teacher? Like what kind of teacher were you? And like was it middle school, high school? Like what kind of teacher were you? Sure. And basically, what led to the moment where you said, "Man, you know what? I need to get in tech." You got it, man. Good question. Um, I I started off as an elementary school teacher. So for about Eight years, I taught fourth grade and fifth grade. I loved it. Um, and then the last uh, six, seven years of my career, I was a middle school language arts teacher. And I'm going to say this up front. I love teaching. And I, I still do. I thought it was an awesome job. I love kids. Um, I liked working with people. Um, I, you know, I, as a matter of fact, one thing I usually will say in inter when I had interviews, and if you're a teacher out there and you're considering, you troubleshoot problems every day. And that is the number one skill that you need. Yeah. Your job, a teacher's job is to diagnose basically kids, people, find out what their yeah. strengths and weaknesses are and fix the weaknesses to the best of your ability. So you're always troubleshooting and I leveraged that during my interview process, but that's far, that's far ahead. But um, to go back to that, I, I was a teacher. I taught for 15 years and I got to a point in my life where I was ready for a change for multiple reasons. I was about to have another child. So I have a baby right now. Um, you know, I, I just needed a new direction in my life. I, I taught for 15 years and I didn't get burnt out. I just said, you know what? I am, I'm still young enough. Um, and age doesn't really matter by the way in tech, if you're worried about that. Yeah. Thank um, you for touching on that. That's important. Yeah. I'm in my 40s, you know, and, and a lot of people think, oh, it's too late to change it. No, it's not, believe me. Um, but, you know, I, I decided at this point, I, I'm having a family. I, my wife wanted to stay home, raise the baby. I could not do that on a teacher's salary. It was not going to happen. <laughs> not today. So, not at today's time. No, no, not at all. And so I always had a, a, a love and passion for tech. I've always been interested in how those things work. And so I just made a, a decision with my family. I said, look, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go back to school. Uh, my nights are going to be non-existent. Um, you know, I'm not going to be there to put kids to bed. I won't be there for dinner. I'm going to be studying. There's 24 hours in the day. I'm going to be sleeping for about four or five of those. And the rest of it will be busy because I have a goal and I'm dead set to get it no matter what. Nothing's stopping me. So yeah. I just I just jumped in. I found Yellowtail because they had a Linux uh, uh, admin uh, class. And okay. Linux, Linux is the foundation of many roles that you want, mm -hmm. it, you know, so it was just a good practical fit for me. And it was one of the best decisions I made. Yeah. Yo, I love that. There's so much that you said that we could like really touch on. I think just even kind of talking about the most recent thing you said for anybody, I want to make sure y'all didn't miss it, where he mentioned that Linux 
is like essentially it's a bedrock of a lot of different roles or entry points to a lot of different roles in tech, which is really important to have a skill set like that, because to have something that's an entry level point to a variety of different roles, it opens you up to a variety of opportunities to a variety of different companies. And so, again, that's one of the reasons to have a conversation about a role like this in tech, because not only does it present you with an opportunity for a six figure career, but even aside from that, it presents you with an opportunity to even pivot in different ways and work in a variety in, in like a, a certain variety of different roles and all kind of like align with uh, with Linux. Something else I, I thought was really cool. So uh, congratulations on is it your second child that you had? Third. Third child. OK, cool. <laughs> so. I love it. So one of the things a lot of people message me and I'm sure at this point, I'm sure you've had like different people message you after, you know, seeing your story about you getting in the tech industry. But a lot of times people message me and they say that they're at like a really tough point in life. And that's many times. Most times it's people people are kind of either at a breaking point or they're at a bit of a crucible where they're like, man, I need to make a transition. And I'm just curious. I, I felt the heavy pressure on me when I was trying to get into the tech industry. But what was the pressure like for you as a husband and a father of two and having the third one on the way? Like, because, again, you, you realize, OK, well, we have a third one on the way. It's, it's on my shoulders now. How did like how was that pressure like for you? And also, how did your wife feel about that when you told her, hey, baby, look, I know I've been a teacher for a while. I, you know, I love I love I love children. I love teaching. But I need to go ahead and make this transition. Like, mm -hmm. What was the pressure like? Were you were you afraid or were you just like so focused that you didn't care? Like you got tunnel vision, like what was it? Tunnel vision. I, I I got to a point where I knew I was doing this and yeah. I already I already saw my success. There there was no there was no fear of failure. There was yeah. no this is not gonna work. I, that wasn't even that even crossed my mind. I said I I'm it. I'm at point A, I see point B right there. I see it right in front of my face. I just gotta get there. That's it. Yes. And that's why I tell people, you just got to get there. It's like walking. Yeah. That's all it is. And so yeah. my family was behind. Well, number one, my family was behind me. I had to sit down with them. I said, listen, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And I need, I need your support. And they said, you're going to make how much? I told them, they said, yes, go for it. You know, <laughs> 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 yeah, you, you, you can sacrifice some time because the end result is, you know, I work from home. Um, I, you know, I make a lot more money than I used to make, uh, yeah. life is good. So, you know, it was, it was, it was an easy, it wasn't, it didn't take much convincing and I, I was almost ignorant to failure, which is a good place to be. I just knew I was going to succeed. I just had to get there and walk there. That's all. Yeah. I love it so much. You know, at this point, I probably, I've probably gone live with roughly about 60 plus people. And one of the most consistent things that I see with everyone, and it was the same thing with myself, was that all of us had this like, man, we just had tunnel vision, like just mm -hmm. straight tunnel vision. You know, like people asked me, you know, they were like, well, Cyrus, like how long were you willing to go before you were going to give up? I was like, man, I said, I literally said I was going to give it an entire year. I was going to aggressively it, like interview, apply, network, do everything aggressively for a year before I would even start to consider align myself to not even stop, but just like, okay, maybe I should start looking at something else. Mm -hmm. And so, but if, and I mean, I'm, I'm curious. So you had that, that same tunnel vision. Now let's talk about, okay, your experience with Yellowtail Bootcamp. So what was your experience like with the bootcamp? And also, how long did it take you before you before you landed a job after Yellowtail? Yeah, great question. Uh, the boot camp was excellent. Um, it, it was it was intense in that you're learning a whole new skill set. Yeah. Um, even if you have background in Windows, Microsoft, Linux is a completely different animal, right? And okay. it's a good animal. You know, it's not bad, but it's different. So it's very intense in that you're learning some really important and technical stuff. So uh, the boot camp was wonderful. It was, it was a dedication of two to three days a week, a couple hours on top of study time. So oh, wow. okay. I, I probably committed myself to about 20 hours a week that you okay. don't need that. I didn't need that, but you, that's what I wanted to do. I, I, yeah. I, car I carved out time. So it was a very intense 
focused time for me because okay. I really wanted to be on top of my game. But to answer the second part of your your and, and the and the boot camp prepared me well. Uh, it was it's broken up into three areas. It's your learning, which is about six months and a certification prep course to get your red hat certification. And then there's an internship you go through. So by the time you're done, you're really well prepared. Now, from the time I started to the day I, to my first day of my job was uh, 12 or 14 months. Okay, cool. All right. So from the time you started, so, so from the day you started the boot camp, so you started at your job, it was 14 months. How long was Yellowtail? How long was it was the course for, for specifically for, for for the Linux? Yeah, well, the 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 course itself with the certification prep was six months long, and then there was a or seven months long and a two month long um, uh, internship. Okay, that. cool, man. So between so so in a in a two month internship, so between the internship that was nine. Nine months. Okay, so nine months to 14. So it was five months after you completed, after you had finished the internship with them before you landed a job? Now that you said that, I was actually, it was a, it was 13 months. So yeah, within four months, I landed a job. Okay, so within four months. Man. Yeah, yeah you, know what's, you know what's so crazy? One of the things I'm always talking to people about, oh man, so literally in a year, you're able to like turn your life around. So, yep. so one of the things that I was I was talking to people about oftentimes whenever, whenever I'm communicating with people that have done like a boot camp or a program, and like some someone just messaged me a couple of days ago and they said, Hey Cyrus, I don't have a job yet. And they did another boot camp. And I was like, Well, I was like, well, you know, when'd you finish the boot camp? And they said, Oh, I, I finished it in uh the middle of July. And I was like, July. I was, I was like, it's, it's literally just been a couple months. I was like, but I still told them, I said, Okay, look, send me your LinkedIn, send me some information, let me look over some stuff. But I was like, look, I said, you you really, there's not really anything too questionable until like maybe you're entering month six or month seven before you don't have anything. I was like, it's not something where usually you just get something out of the gate. And it's so interesting how it always just proves itself where it's like most people land roles, you know, sp specifically when people are doing their due diligence with, with when, whenever they've done a solid boot camp and they've done their due diligence to get out there, interview network, all of that. It's always somewhere between three to five months, like every single time. And so I just, yeah. I love to see that consistency. And because when, when did you actually, I saw it on your LinkedIn, but I, I didn't actually take note of the date. When did you start at your company? March. Okay. March of this year. Yeah. Okay. And you know, what's so wild is that that was around the peak of, of people not getting jobs, of layoffs, layoffs. No Layoff. hiring, yeah. all of that stuff. And of course, now we're we're kind of on the downturns where now the layoffs are dying out, and now we're mm -hmm. we're in, you know, for those of y'all that don't know, right now, like hiring is picking up like crazy, especially in September. Right now, we're in the September surge, so hiring is picking up like crazy. But I love it how, you know, man, it's so crazy because because around the time you had even went into the boot camp is when there were whispers and conversations about layoffs and about you know companies not hiring as much anymore so so when you were in the boot camp and that's just that's crazy to see just your tunnel vision despite all the news and everything everyone was saying you still like you still like we're just full steam ahead was there at any point that you or your wife at all were like you know what man we don't know about this or would you say that you just consistently were just focused no, I, I knew I was getting a job. It wasn't even a question. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to shut the noise out. There's a lot of noise out there. Um, and, and that's everything in life. You know, like you just shut the noise out because that's all it yeah. is. If you're, you can't tell me there isn't a job for you out there. Go on, go on all the job boards that are hiring. The question Man. is, are, are, are you ready for it? Like, that's the question. Have you prepared yourself for it? Are you confident? You know, if you do all those things, you're going to have that job because all the people that are listening to the noise are not going to boot camp, are not applying for jobs, yes. opening the position for you to step right in. That's all there is yeah. to it. That's that's so real. That's so real. You know, one of the things I've noticed, I've, I've seen people, people oftentimes, and I'm, I'm going to say this and we, we can kind of like continue, continue to move on. Uh, and y'all make sure again, y'all, for those of y'all that have questions, we're not able to keep up with the comments. So make sure those of y'all that are on Instagram, you're putting your questions in the question box. Those of y'all that are on YouTube, 
and LinkedIn. Make sure that you have your questions ready um, because in a few minutes, we're going to pivot and start answering y'all's questions. So I want to make sure that y'all are ready so that way we can get to y'all's um, get to y'all's questions. But I love it so much. I, I have never seen people will come to me oftentimes and people will say, oh, Cyrus, well, I was on Reddit or I was on this platform and I saw people talking bad or negative about this boot camp or this program. And I was like, you know what? One thing I've never seen, I've never seen a person that was announcing that they got a job after doing a boot camp, also mentioning how they spent a bunch of time on Reddit or on a platform. And so I see someone said, mention the certification that you have. Yeah, so I don't know if they just popped in. So he is, uh, so just to kind of refresh everybody, he's a Linux systems engineer. Y'all can actually look at the pinned comment. He did Yellowtail Bootcamp. And so Linux systems engineer, Yellowtail Bootcamp, it's a very high in-demand role in tech that literally opens a door for you to do a variety of different jobs in the tech industry. And it is a six-figure career in tech. So Yellowtail Bootcamp has a very sufficient program, which is the bootcamp that he did. Uh, for anybody that wants a discount to it, literally you can hit the link in my bio and I have a $500 off a discount to the bootcamp. If you balling and rolling in the dough and you don't care for a discount, I still recommend that you check out Yellowtail Tech. Uh, they have both cloud engineering as well as, as well as their Linux program as well that will really be able to get you all started in your career in tech. And so for a lot of people that might not even know what cloud is, eventually I'm going to see if I can bring someone on that's done, done uh, their cloud engineering, but just on a bit of a high level on what cloud is. And George, you can speak to this as well, like based on like how much you know. We're not going to go too in-depth on this, but mm -hmm. when, you, when I mention cloud engineering, think of the cloud, like how, you know, AWS or Amazon Web Services, like how we store data in the cloud now where instead of you needing to have your own data center at your company, companies instead will just leverage Google's, Google's cloud services or their data services or AWS, Amazon Web Services. And basically saying all of this to say, because this isn't like a whole tutorial or breakdown as to what it is, but all of this just to be saying that these are in-demand jobs in tech that, that pay a lot of money. Some of the highest paying people that I've had on the Tech is New Black podcast were cloud engineers and Linux engineers. So these are really incredible roles that are in high demand. And that's what I'm really excited to. A lot of y'all have been asking to bring somebody on as a systems engineer. And now we have it here and I'm, I'm super, super excited about this. So George, let me ask you this. So you mentioned how you got a huge pay bump after you got into the tech industry, you went from being a teacher to being a Linux systems engineer. Now, I'm not gonna ask a specific number, but if I can ask how much of a pay bump was it? Like, was it? <clears throat> Double your pay? Was it triple? Was it fifty percent more? Like, like what was double? It? Double. Okay. Double. You doubled your yep. salary from a that's, teacher to. Yeah. Man, that's incredible. Yeah, doubled it. Uh, and I, I want to say this about tech right now: the people that are listening or maybe considering doing this, I, I call tech like the wild, wild west right now. Like, you can just there's no rules. Like, you can just go to a boot camp and make six figures. You know, it's crazy. Like. That's going to yeah. change. It's going to change one day. One day they're going to do this. You know, I can't stand how some jobs won't hire without a degree. I think that's ridiculous. So this is, this is a field where anyone, no matter who you are, can go learn some skills and they're going to take you. They don't care who you are. You can have one yeah. arm. They're going to take you because <laughs> it, there's a, there's a demand for it. And all you got to do is go learn the skills. No one cares about your degree or your background, just can you get on the computer and fix my problem? And yes. you have a you have a million boot camps to get you there. You have online learning that you can do yourself. If you just apply yourself, you're gonna get the job. It's that simple. That's very real. And I mean, a re recruiter cousin is in the comments. Uh, for those of y'all that don't know who she is, she is a, uh, I'm not sure if, uh, Shanae, are you a senior tech recruiter now? I know she just got promoted recently, but she is a very, very popular recruiter uh, that is at the largest tech company in the world or the most successful tech company, however you want to put it in the world. And so she is a, a big dog in the tech industry, informs a lot of people. She Now, she's not just a tech recruiter. She's a technical tech recruiter, meaning that she recruits for technical roles. So Linux, systems engineering, again, even though it's not something that requires being able to code or program, Nevertheless, it is still considered a 
it is still considered a technical role in tech. So for oh, her, totally. she just she just commented and said, yes, it's in very high demand. And like George was just sharing, and I want y'all to catch this. The reason why we're having this conversation isn't just to talk about another job in tech, but to talk about a job in tech where there is high demand, but there are few people that are actually skilled to do it. So that's why doing a boot camp like Yellowtail, like what George did, being able to skill up, you know, if you do your due diligence, you put that work in, you will be more than qualified. And so, yeah, Shanae just doubled down. She said it is in high demand, sign on bonuses, stock options, all of that good stuff. And if y'all have been paying attention recently, y'all know I always mention, you know, making six figures in tech. But we talk about stock options, especially equity, depending on the company that you're at. That's where we talk about you setting yourself up in the next few years to being a millionaire just from a nine to five in tech. And so those are the things we need to think about, we need to learn about. And so I was literally just on a podcast today, uh, shouts out to Run the Play podcast, where they always interview entrepreneurs. And they're always talking about how people can make money as entrepreneurs. But they brought me on, I was brought on to talk about the tech industry, to talk about, hey, because the numbers that we talk about in tech are literally on par, if not more, than what a lot of people that come on as guests on his on as entrepreneurs talk about. Because again, a lot of people don't know this, and I'm, I'm super for entrepreneurship. I love it, but the the median income for entrepreneurs, the median income. This isn't entry level. This is amongst all entrepreneurs. The median income for entrepreneurs is seventy thousand dollars, whereas the whereas their working hours, they're working over sixty hours a week, versus the average income, which isn't even median. And we're talking median, median income for people working in tech is about $115,000 working 35 hours a week. And so, you know, again, I'm very pro entrepreneurship, but it's like, man, to be able to leverage, like George mentioned, he's working remote. He's able to spend more time, be around his family more, give some more flexibility. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that because I want to hear more about that from him. But for him to be able to double his salary, going from a teacher to being a Linux, Linux systems engineer, He's automatically making more money than the majority of entrepreneurs in America working half the time they work remote. And now as he's scaling in his career as a Linux systems engineer or whatever other direction or route he wants to pivot over to, he now has more money than the than the average entrepreneur working remote has more time on his hands to where once he decides, okay, cool, I might want to do something else, whether he wants to invest his money into something, whether he wants to become a real estate investor, like he now has the flexibility and his, and, and his income is going to be scaling and growing. I could just tell just by his mindset, y'all know I talk all the time, don't just break into tech, scale in tech, learn more about this industry. And so this is an incredible, incredible life-changing opportunity. It's already changed George's life and life of his family and it's going to continue to change our lives. Mm -hmm. And the whole purpose of these conversations is so that it can impact other people so y'all can hear his story, get insights, and you all can be able to break into tech and scale in tech as well. And so I said a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, but George, so, so you did Yellowtail Bootcamp. Four months after finishing, uh, you were able to start at your first company. You mentioned earlier how Linux systems engineering is in high demand. What was your application you mentioned like yellow tail they also gave you some 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 tips and things when it came to applying interviewing what all tools that they give you that set you up for success when it came to you applying interviewing networking to get a job in tech and then also what was that what was your interview process like okay well the tools they give um they they have a career coach and a very knowledgeable um intelligent career coach that knows his stuff. So there's that. There's someone to bounce ideas off of. They do a resume review and they're pretty stringent on it. They make your resume look good. Um, they do they do mock interviews. You have to pass three of them. Um, they prepare you for them along the way and they give you feedback so that you're ready to go there. And then they give you different things. They give you tools like technical tools to track your job search. So those are the main things they give you. They give you a career coach, which is valuable. Um, they give yeah. you resume tips. They give you mock interviews and motivation. And for me, the interview, 
the, the, the process for me is, this is what I tell people when it comes to the, to the interview process. You need to, you need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, am I doing the best I can? Is my LinkedIn set up? Do I look good on LinkedIn? Is my resume where it needs to be? Do I have a, prof- do I have a professional headshot? You know, some people just take their picture from a party they went to and throw it up there. You can't do that, man. <laughs> if you got that, if you got that on your LinkedIn, change it now. Um, they, but, got, they got the, the, the bathroom picture for <laughs> real on the, on the counter, the cell phone. Man, I've seen some weird stuff on there, man. Like just get it, just spend the hundred bucks, get the dang headshot done, put it up on link, borrow it from someone. If you don't have it, put it on LinkedIn, get that, get that, get that going on. And then, and here's the most important part, contribute there, post helpful things, be, be selfless in your interview process, give to others that will be noticed by people. When you, when I was on the interview process, I just made videos and I helped people learn the basics of Linux. That was my thing. And then, and here's the cool thing. I did the job I ended up getting. I didn't even apply to it. A recruiter reached out to me. They, 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 did they recruit? All right. So I'm going to ask you a lead, a leading question. Did the recruiter, did they reach out to you through LinkedIn? Yes. Okay. And did they, my bad, go ahead. I'm going to let you say it. I'll ask no, the next I, question. We I get, say? I get two to three every day, even to this I, day. I tell y'all this all the time. Oh my gosh. I tell people this all the time. Okay. So now I'm going to ask my next question. So you mentioned how, and I forget exactly how you put it, but that you were being selfless and you were sharing information. Yep. You were, I'm assuming you were posting this information on LinkedIn. Yep. Listen, I tell, I talk, oh my gosh, I love this so much. I tell people, so, so one of the ways, all right, so I'm going to tell you something, George. This, so I got, I got in the industry. My first company started me at $90,000. And, and, and I'm telling George this, y'all, because usually when people, whenever I do a live with someone, it's someone that knows about me. They've been following me for a minute. But but George, we literally just connected recently. So so George, I got in a tech, started $90,000. Within nine months, I had job hopped a couple of times. And the, the companies I job hopped to, I didn't even reach out to the companies. They were reaching out to me on LinkedIn. I went from $90,000 to nine months later, just my salary, not even my total comp, my salary, I was at $230,000. Oh, they hiring still? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, I think the third company still hiring, but even the, the first <laughs> one put me put me at $157,000. And Oof. that was just, that was my OTE plus a $12,000 sign-on bonus. So again, that mm-hmm. wasn't even my total comp. And I people ask me what other skills that I get. I actually didn't even upskill at all during that time. The only thing that I did, and I'm not saying don't upskill y'all, definitely upskill. <laughs> but the only thing that I was doing, I was sharing content on LinkedIn, yep. showcasing some of my knowledge as a sales engineer. Now, m- most of it was actually comedy, but it would be comedy that would be referencing things that I was doing in my job. And then I would mention in my caption something about the job and I would get engagement from people. And it had companies reaching out to me like crazy. And I was telling mm-hmm. people, there will be people saying, Cyrus, uh, it doesn't seem like anybody's hiring. I would say literally I'm getting two to three recruiters messaging me every day on LinkedIn, offering me jobs. And mm-hmm. so I love that you mentioned that, how you did the boot camp, you had the knowledge. And y'all, this y'all, this is such, what he dropped is such a gem, such a gem. He did the boot camp and got the knowledge. He didn't just apply an interview and do that. He you he leveraged LinkedIn's platform. He freely gave away free game, but as he gave away that free game, it other people were liking it, sharing it, and other recruiters, hiring managers, and people were seeing it, and they're like, "Whoa, this guy knows his stuff." So they didn't have to look at his resume. They didn't have to do all those things. They were able to look at his LinkedIn, like he mentioned. He optimized his LinkedIn properly, made sure he had it set up proper. But then also they were able to, to, to see a bit of his personality, a bit of yep. his professionalism and, and his knowledge as he was dropping those gems. And yep. so that's why we tell y'all all the time. Y'all, I have, Shanae is actually recruiter cousin. 
She's actually going to be our first recurring guest on Tech as a New Black podcast. She's actually coming this weekend. We're going to interview her. I'm not going to say everything, but I'm just going to say that even she realized recently that her making content on LinkedIn is one of the things that's that's kind of even insulated her within her career. And so it's really important that y'all don't just do a definitely do the boot camp because that's how you get the knowledge. Because he never could have been posting that information and knowing those things without the boot camp. But mm-hmm. make sure that you're not just saying, okay, I did a program and now I'm just I'm just kind of like just applying here and there. But you are really leveraging these opportunities because to have the company reach out to him. So anyway, I'm excited. I'm let me calm down, Wusa. So so you're posting this free game, this free content, mm-hmm. company that you're currently at. They reached out to you. Somebody said, sorry, I was about to have a show. Y'all know I get, I get excited. I love this stuff so much. So the company reached out to you. What did that look like? And, and I guess what was your reaction when they reached out? And what did that interview process look like? Well, the gentleman reached out to me. He says, oh, it looks like what he noticed on my resume was my RHCSA certification, the certification that I trained for through, through Yellowtail. And he okay. said, the, co- the company I represent needs someone who knows Linux. And I said, okay. And as a matter of fact, it's funny because he sent me a message. I didn't see it for days. It was like three, four days later. I saw him like, wow. oh, man. So I messaged him back. I'm like, I'm sorry I'm late on this, man. You know, but is it still available? He's like, yeah, send me your resume. So I sent them a resume. And then um, it, it took a couple of weeks before we finally got on the phone. Yeah. We got on the phone and I just sold myself. I, I was up, I was transparent. I was honest. I was, I, I conveyed my strength is I have good technical skills, but my strength is communicating with people and yeah. they needed someone that the tech field industry needs a lot more of that. Um, yes. So, <laughs> so I was able to communicate clearly with him and I think he liked that. And he put me, he put me in connection with my first interview with one of the hiring managers and we connected right away. As a matter of fact, what was funny about that, and I think you get a kick out of this, Cyrus, is when we first got on the phone, I had technical difficulties just like we did today, man. <laughs> and I said to the guy, I said, I go, you guys aren't going to hire me, are you? I can't even get a headphone to work. And they loved it. You know, they just laugh. <laughs> yeah. But I got it working, proved my skills. And then, um, then we, had a, we had a final interview. And with, it was about a three-week process when I got the job. And as a matter of fact, the day I got the job, I remember my wife and I were driving to the beach. I was unemployed, right? And I'm like, man, I just wish those people would call me back. I swear, three seconds later, I get a phone call. It goes, hey, you want the job at yours? So the, the, the piece of advice I wanna tell people that when they start looking for a job, you don't know when that job's coming, man. Just, it's a numbers game. You put your resume out there, put your content out there, and then you might have had an interview that you thought you bombed or didn't do well, and they might call you three weeks later. You just don't know. So you can't give up. You got to keep plugging away. Man, that's that's so incredible. Man, that, that timing, just the whole story, man, is just beautiful. I love it so much. I love it so much. And, and I also hope y'all peep him mentioning, one, him mentioning how, yeah, he has some technical skills, but he really was able to leverage his his personal skills and his personality. And so, again, we talk all the time about like when you're interviewing with these tech companies, don't be a stick in the mud. Don't be overly professional. Be human. Be relatable. Be quirky. Be be funny. Be yourself. Be natural. Mm-hmm. Be and yourself. So even, yeah. Even him cracking that joke with him saying, man, y'all aren't going to hire me because I can't even can't even get my headphones to work. And it's like just just him being normal, because, again, recruiters, hiring managers, they're doing these interviews. Sometimes they get bored. And for them to be able to be like, oh, my God, you're a cool person. So now it's not even like such a such a strict interview. We know we're talking to a cool person. We're able to relax, get to know you, all of that good stuff. So many of y'all that think that, oh, man, I'm not this this overly technical person. It's like, again, the boot camp that you do will give you the knowledge that you need. You just bring the personality, bring, you know, bring the flair, bring yourself to the table, because that's one of the things that is lacking in this industry. Where they're like, hey, look, and that's why everybody that that's why every, the same way everyone thinks that the tech industry means that like you're you're just kind of this stick in the mud nerd. The <laughs> industry is saying it, it's like we don't have to be that way. It just so happens that for whatever reason, the majority of people that got in tech were like that. 
but personality wise, they want the flair. They want they want like normal, cool, down to earth people. And so um, I love so much George mentioned that man. So so well, congratulations again. I told you that before we we jumped in live. Congratulations on being able to uh, break into the industry. I'm really excited uh, about Yellowtail, about people being able to have conversations about Linux systems engineering, conversations around cloud engineering, because uh, these are other fields in tech that I don't talk enough about outside of the uh, outside of the podcast. And again, y'all, these are incredible, incredible opportunities to be able to get into the industry, have skill sets that many people don't have, that you're able to leverage these skill sets and be very unique in the tech industry. And so even those of y'all that have done some other type of maybe you have like some tech, tech sales skill set, you leveraging something like uh, like Linux systems engineering, just uh, Linux in general, is something that would definitely diversify your skill set and make you in very high demand and very valuable uh, in this industry. That being said, all right, I know you're working remote. I'm going to ask just a few different things. People are going to want to know this. So you're working remote. What are some of the other benefits that you have? Like, okay, you're working remote. Is your company covering your Wi-Fi? Like, like what are some of the things that, that they're doing for you at your company? Um, they don't they don't cover my Wi-Fi. That'd be pretty cool. I should ask for that. Um, they I, I get, you know, a computer, all those things. Uh, you know, I get medical insurance, and it's actually the best medical insurance I've ever had. Um, it, they pretty much pay for all of it. Um, I get a lot of time off. I uh, get um, 17 days. Plus, I had a. I, they gave me a month of paternity leave when my baby was born. Right away. As a man. Yes. Oh my gosh. I I was very shocked and, and very grateful for that. It was awesome. Man, that's beautiful. Yeah, it is man, beautiful. You, man, that's incredible. You you went from being okay. Wow, we have a we have a third child that's going to be on the way. Mm -hmm. I need to increase my income. You went from that to not only has my income increased, but now I get to be home for a month with my wife, with our children during this very important season. And that's that's so beautiful. I love that. I love me, that. Yeah, me too. So, all right. So, y'all, we're going to go ahead and jump into some of these questions and stuff because I know y'all been sending in some questions. Those of y'all that are on LinkedIn, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube, make sure y'all are dropping your questions in the chat. We're going to go ahead and jump over to these questions on Instagram, the Instagram streets. So again, for those of y'all that recently popped in, I know people are constantly popping in. Uh, George is a Linux systems engineer. He recently broke into the tech industry this year after doing Yellowtail Bootcamp. Uh, Yellowtail is a bootcamp that offers a Linux course as well as a cloud engineering course. Both of these are six-figure careers in the tech industry. Very high demand with not enough people to be able to meet that demand. So by doing this boot camp, it sets you up very well to be able to not just break into tech, but break into tech with a very high demand role that pays a lot of money and also be able to scale. I've, I've met only a few people in the tech industry that are, that are millionaires. Most of them are either in tech sales or they're cloud engineers. And many times it's also because they leverage the equity that their company have either before the company went public uh, or like shortly before or the stock options, variety of different things when it comes to the total compensation. And so they're very high paying roles, high demand roles. So I just want to put y'all on. Definitely check out Yellowtail Bootcamp. Anybody that wants a if you want a discount code to Yellowtail, just either click the link in my bio and you'll get five hundred dollars off when you go to sign up and check out their courses. Or you literally just, you know, if you don't want to go to click the link in my bio, if you want to make it very simple, just comment the word cloud engineer or comment Linux or Linux engineer. Linux is L-I-N-U-X. Did I spell it right? Yeah, I spell it right. Uh, so just comment that. And then myself or somebody on my team will like shoot you a message with the discount link. And so, um, yeah, super cool stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into these questions. So first question we have, someone asked, George, was a degree required? Assuming you were a school teacher, did you have to use your degree as leverage? No, I, I definitely had a degree, but they that wasn't even a question. That wasn't in the job description. It wasn't a requirement. Um, a lot of times you'll see in the job description, bachelor's degree, master's or experience. But you know what? From my, from my experience, if, if you can just have the skills and sell yourself in the interview, that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all definitely I agree with that. I'm not gonna say too much on it, but 
definitely your knowledge, your experience, your skills trumps any degree above and yeah. beyond. Yeah. All right. So how much was uh, how much was Yellowtail? At the time that I was in, I believe it was around eight thousand dollars. I don't know what it costs now. Or, um, I haven't kept up with that, but yeah, worth yeah. every penny, by the way. And you, you got you got your money back, and then some. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's all about. This. That's what you got. That's the way you got to look at it. You have to look at it like that. You have this. I, I knew going into it that in a couple of months I, I'd have it all paid back, which I did. I paid it back. Yeah. Yeah, I love that so much because I think sometimes about that. That's what I was thinking through with college. I remember when I first got in tech and I first started talking about it online. I was telling people like, man, look like, you know, and I'm not I'm not I'm not anti knowledge uh, at all. It's like get knowledge, get information. I'm not even necessarily anti college. I'm just anti certain college curriculums where on the back end, when you get a job, you're not getting paid that much. It's like, OK, you, you have 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars in college debt. But your job now and the ceiling of your career is somewhere between forty and sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> it's gonna take you ten years to pay that back. Versus, you know, you do a boot camp that's eight thousand, ten thousand dollars, whatever, and you get that money back in the next couple months after doing the program. And now you just have money. You have no debt. You're good to go. Yeah, I got a master's degree and a lot of debt. So, uh, you know, I, nothing no, so wrong with college. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say, so So you're still paying off your college degree, yeah. but you're done. You you made the money back from doing, from yeah. doing Yellowtail. Uh, if I can go back in time, man, I would have just skipped all that and went to a boot camp or, and I, I, and this is going to, this is going to make me sound like a bad dad, but I tell my kids, like, no, you don't need to go to, you don't need to go to college. Just go to boot camp, you know? <laughs> I'm Man. discouraging my kids from going to college. <laughs> I mean, I mean, so I, I don't think boot camps. I don't because boot camps are, are something that just popped up like six or seven years ago, or I'm saying ten years ago around it. But it's like, man, yeah, if they existed, like back then, I definitely, definitely, yeah. So, all right, so let's let's get back to the question. I know people are waiting on a question. So, all right, someone asked, how many hours per week would you say that you work? Um, forty. There are people that work a lot more than that, but I think they're crazy. Um, I work my 40 and I go back to my life. Yeah, definitely. Love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. All right. And um, someone asked. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So someone asked, can you please talk about how to vet and ultimately choose the correct boot camp for someone wanting to enter into. Okay. Now this, this is a different question. So a sharp message me this question privately because this is about cybersecurity, and so that's a whole different conversation. Um, so, all right. So someone asked, can you please list all of your certifications? So what certifications did you get through Yellowtail, mm -hmm. and I guess maybe what did you do after that that you felt might or might not have uh, assisted you in landing your role? I have one certification. Red Hat Certified Systems Administrator, and that is it. Um, I am going to be taking my Microsoft Azure, which is a cloud platform, yeah. Fundamental Cert next month. I've been training for it, uh, and I'm interested in the cloud and, and moving that way because that's where the world's going. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, that's all. I only, have, I only have one. I don't. I work with people who make, you know, two fifty, three hundred grand a year, and they have none. Yeah. I'm not I'm not discouraging certifications, by the way. I want to make that clear. They're great to have. They're a good test of your knowledge. They do show a recruiter on your resume. It's it's a good to have them. But um, I only have one, and that's all I needed to get a job. Yeah. Yeah. I usually share with people that because I know some people that go certification crazy, they'll just get a bunch of certifications. And it's like they're like they're like stacking them up and they think just having a bunch of random certifications is going to get them a job. And it's like, no, like certifications are nice additions to, let's say you have a technical college degree or you've done a boot camp. Having certificate, if you want to add additional certifications, one, make sure that they make sense to your role and not just random certifications all over the place, you know, and two, don't rely on the certifications. Rely mainly on, OK, if you've done a boot camp on the networking and leveraging your LinkedIn, you know, literally the, the piece that George is talking yeah. about. I, I say certifications are great. Uh, and if, if you're someone who's goal oriented 
or you like to achieve something and have like a badge or whatever, or if that's what you need to be motivated, I think it's excellent. Like if mm-hmm. you have something, yeah, like my wife's the type of person wants to work towards something, you know? Yeah. So there's a goal, there's a certification at the end of the, at the end of the rainbow. Right. So yeah, then that's, that's, if that's what motivates you and gets you the skills you need do it. That's real. I love that. I never, I never thought about it from that angle. That's good yeah. to note that. Okay, cool. So, Someone asked, what is your tech stack or all the tools that you use for your job? I think our video ended, our uh, Instagram feed. So I think Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. I think Instagram just kicked us off. Yeah, it did. Uh, I think Instagram has a, a timer on it now. I think they put a one hour timer on it because this happened last week as well, but it hadn't been happening before. Instagram out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it literally is a one hour timer because we literally jumped on an hour ago because I noticed the same thing happened last week before Instagram would just let me just go. Uh, so we're going to do this. Um, we'll, we're going to focus on questions. There were only a few more questions on there. We're going to focus on a few questions that are here on YouTube and LinkedIn and then we'll we'll jump off uh, in the next like five to ten minutes max. So let me uh, just just post this. All right. Let's see. Hey, Cyrus, are can you, you hear me? Are you? Oh, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, good. The IG feed died. Oh, you didn't hear anything I said? Yeah, I was saying that Instagram kicked us out because after. I started noticing um, literally it hit an hour. I think they're starting to cut people off live after an hour. Okay. okay so cool. we're just gonna we're gonna wrap up here. Um, yeah, we're gonna answer so because we didn't answer any questions from YouTube or LinkedIn. So first question I see on here, someone on LinkedIn asked, "What positions are directly below systems engineers and sales engineers?" So as to level up from inside the company. So I'm not. I don't fully understand the question, but I think I kind of understand it. But yeah, they're asking what positions are directly below. I guess, like, I guess what's an entry level for them to become a systems engineer? There's so many different. I I, um, I want to try and be straightforward with this. I, I don't like when people dance around questions, so I'm going to try not to. But it's not so direct and clear. Uh, there is, I wouldn't say below, but a pathway you could take uh, that some people do. Some people do help desk, and then from there they become like maybe an analyst or something like that. Um, and admin is a clear way to get there, but I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't a help desk te- technician. So, you know, there's, I went right to engineer cause I had the skills for it. So it, it's hard to say really um, what would be below it, but I definitely think, you know, a support technician is a good place to start. If you think about any kind of like support role in tech, That'd be a good way to like, I guess, get some skills and make your way to that point. Sorry for the not so straightforward answer, guys. No, that's a very, I think that's a very straightforward answer. Also, so so that's a good question. I don't want to knock the person's question at all, but I want to I want to be very clear and kind of like kind of leapfrog off what he said. <laughs> in that if your goal, because usually when the question is, and I could be wrong, but if your goal is how can I become a Linux systems engineer or a sales engineer without doing a boot camp? And so I could get like a very, very, very entry level role without any experience or any knowledge. And then eventually get step into that role. I would tell you, you can do that. You can do that for a lot of jobs in tech. Nevertheless, I know sales engineers that got a very entry level job and they started out at help desk, like you mentioned. I know one personally, I'm eventually going to bring him on the podcast because he's a dude I admire a lot in tech. Uh, he's a, 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 a really cool Hispanic DJ who lives in Austin, Texas, or he lives in Austin or Dallas. He's a popular DJ, but a lot of people don't know he's actually a sales engineer. And he started from the very bottom. He came from the hood or he was from the hood. He ended up becoming a help desk and then like worked his way up. But it took him... It took him two and a half years to get to where I was at when I met him. And it only took me a few months after doing a tech boot camp. 
So if you can say, okay, cool, I'm going to start out, I'm going to grind my way from the bottom, but you don't want it to take you two years, two and a half years, what could instead take you seven, eight months or less. So I just want to like kind of touch on that. But anyway, so next question. All right. So someone said, uh, I'm a science teacher and trust me, I'm ready to make moves into the tech industry. I know so you continue. are. <laughs> <laughs> man, it's, it's so rough. It's so rough for teachers right now, man. It's so rough for teachers. <laughs> I mean, you, you know better than me. So uh, continuing on, the person said, what approach did you take when it came to transitioning from a teacher to a systems engineer? Like, did you reach out to hiring managers and what can I do to make sure I get the job into tech? Okay. If you're, if you're motivated and you're ready to dedicate a, a, a small time frame of your life, like a year, go to a boot camp, go to Yellowtail, someplace like that. Learn the skills. Um, be surrounded with people who are in tech, who talk tech, who know tech. Be around those people. Like, make a complete paradigm shift in your life. Say to yourself, I am now a tech person. Talk tech, read tech, be with tech. Go to school, go back to a boot camp, learn some skills. And then once you do that, reach out, to, be bold and reach out to hire managers, reach out to recruiters and say, look, here's where I'm at. Here's my resume. I'd love to reach out and talk to you. That's it. I think the, the big thing is to grab the skills and then to reach out to people and not be afraid to reach out to people because the worst that's going to happen is someone's going to say no. Big deal. Who hasn't heard no in their life, right? <laughs> so just go for it, man. That's my best advice. Exactly. No, that's facts. I love that. I love that motivation. I love that. Like just uh, being straight with people. All right. Someone mentioned boot camp is a trade. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, that's truly what a boot camp is. Yep. All right. All right. I'll look for some of the other questions in here. All right. Yeah, I appreciate all the love, y'all. I'm trying to find some of y'all questions. So. Someone asked about resume advice. You want me to give some of that real quick? Oh, yeah, yeah, please do. That's good. This is, this is a big one. The resume is so important in this whole process. Number one, make your resume very readable. Use good grammar. If you if you're not, if grammar is not your forte, use someone who is or use an online tool. Get your grammar right on there. Um, word, word your skills um, succinctly and to the point, meaning – what skills do you have? List those down. And the one and, and keep your, your resume. Don't put your picture on there. No one cares about what you look like. Just don't even put your picture on there. Keep it simple. Okay. Don't do the, the fancy graphics. I'm sure there's recruiters that like that, but most of the ones I talk to do not like that and they pass them up. So a black and white, straight up, simple resume, top to bottom, highlight your skills. Um, make sure that everything you put in that resume, you can talk about. So when I list skills on my resume, I think of examples in the real world. So if someone asked me, oh, I see on your resume here that you blah, 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 blah. I already have a story for that in my mind. That's the part that people forget to do. They just list skills on there. Because I've done it before. I've listed skills and people call me out on it an interview. It's embarrassing. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I guess I don't have this job. Nice talking to you. So it happens, you know. So just get your resume right. Know what you're talking about. Um, and last thing about the resume when you're applying to jobs, tailor that resume to your job. You've probably heard that before, but what that means is if the job says Linux system engineer, don't put Linux admin on your, your, your resume, put Linux system engineer because that, yeah. that will show up on the recruiters, whatever thing they use. Um, in addition to that, make sure that the thing, read the job description and make sure your skills match that, or you have a story about that and that's it. That's so good. Yeah, that, that's really important, y'all. Like he was just talking about the applicant tracking system where instead of it being a, a, a recruiter reading the resumes, their their program essentially is reading it and it's ranking your resume based off of how your resume is titled. So mm -hmm. it'll scan your resume. If it's scanning a title that doesn't necessarily fit with the role, then your resume will more than likely not be ranked at the top of the, the virtual pile for the recruiter to even see it. So literally what he's sharing is really, really important uh, to, to mention and highlight. And the, and the person that hired me, the first thing he said is he goes, wow, you're the first person we interviewed that had the title of the job on their resume. Congratulations. That's what he said to me. So why wouldn't, you, why wouldn't you do that to your resume? It makes no sense not to. 
Man, it's it's so crazy. Some of the 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 small things that can just give you like that extra that extra boost. Something so small where someone else might say, "Oh, it's not that serious. It's close enough." I'm just sending them the same resume or same same title, same name, and it's like something so small. Man, that's so common. Yeah. All right. So optimize your resume for each company application, even if yes. it's the same role. Yeah. It's a pain in the butt, but do it. I have a file on my computer where I have like a like a thousand resumes. They're all essentially the same thing, but there's a couple of tweaks that are different on each one of them. But it's what you got to do. Yeah, that's incredible. All right, y'all. So uh, go ahead and start to wrap this up. Um, Jordan, I got a lot of your time tonight, man. I appreciate you so much, dude, for your patience and us being able yeah. to do this and help everybody out. Uh, so I want to give you the floor to share any last whatever that you want to share with everybody uh, before we go ahead and wrap up. Yeah. So the first thing, guys, thanks for being here. The fact that you've been here at this hour and you spent this much time with us is enough to convince me that you're motivated to do this. So the next step is to do it. Go find that boot camp, find a mentor, find whatever resource you need, invest the money, scrape it up somehow, get a loan, whatever you got to do. And, and it was, I couldn't afford it when I did it. But I found a way and it's it's benefited me uh, 14 months later. Uh, it's benefited me and it was well worth the time. So number one, I'd say do it. Number two, when you think ahead, like learning the skills is one thing. Start preparing yourself for the job search right now. You know, start thinking about your LinkedIn. Start thinking about your resume. Start like preparing for an interview that's a year down the road. Do it now in your spare time. Prepare yourself. That'll come across in an interview. You'll come across as well-prepared and put together. And ultimately, isn't that what people want to hire? Someone who's put together and, and has their, their life together. So start now. The other thing is, if you can't afford a boot camp right now, there's a ton of free, free resources online. Follow me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done it yet, go follow me on LinkedIn. I have I, I post resources on there. I have a really good one on there right now you can go to to start learning Linux right now. Um, and just reach out to people. And I would also say, go ahead and reach out to me, uh, message me. I'll respond to everybody on my LinkedIn. Okay, cool. And yeah, also y'all pay attention to the comment that's there from Ivy Jill. Uh, she's with, uh, looks like she's with Yellowtail. So yep. interested in our programs, book a 10 minute intro call. Yeah, y'all definitely like book a call with them, ask some questions, uh, questions that I don't have the answer to. There's some questions that even George wouldn't have the answer to. I mean, he did the bootcamp himself. He's an alumni. He's now working in tech. And so there are definitely some things he could speak to, but there are other things about the program they could speak to, especially since um, since since he's finished the program. And so, um, yeah, thank you so much, George, for coming on here, bro. This was uh, definitely dope. What? I know I can see this on your LinkedIn, but um, what, what city are you based in? I'm in Tampa, Tampa, Florida. Yeah, yeah. We talked about that at, at the top of the call. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I'm, I, I told you earlier I'm in Miami, and I just moved to Miami like six months ago. And so the, the tech scene is crazy out there. Is there a, a, a burgeoning tech community or budgeting tech community yes. at all? That's cool? Huge, huge. Yeah. That's fine. Hey, can, can I look you up if I come down to Miami? Bro, no, no, please do. Please right. do, man. I mean, wh whether just to hang out or even like tech community stuff, it, it's like three or four events every week in Miami that are like with the tech community, but also it's Miami. So there's just like hella stuff to do in general. Nice. Yeah, man, I love it, dude. Yeah, I mean, you you have your you have my number right now. We have each other's numbers, so man, feel free to hit me up, bro. Thank you. Thanks for having me on, and thank you, people, for being on here this late. <laughs> All right, y'all. I love y'all. Y'all have a beautiful and blessed night. Uh, again, um, check out uh, Ivy Jill's comments uh, with uh, with Yellowtail if y'all want to book a ten minute call. Uh, if after doing that, you're like, hey, cool, I definitely want to go ahead and move forward uh, with Yellowtail, whether for cloud engineering or Linux. Uh, and if you want to save $500, I have a $500 discount link for the program. Uh, but definitely check it out. Look into it. And keep me posted on your journey breaking into tech. All right, George. Peace out, guys. Good luck. <laughs>